What's going on, guys? My name is David from Level1Gaming.com. And thank you guys for rocking with us once again. Today, we have a special show for you guys, an interview that I'm not going to lie. I digitally got on my hands and knees and big, even though I didn't need to, because AJ is freaking awesome. An interview I've been wanting to do for a very long time, because they the studio made a game that I've been anticipating for a very long time, that i played for a very long time, because I'm an old man, and I love this game <laughs> as a kid. Uh, today with me, I do have my creative director, Miss Farron, a.k.a. The Floor Hugger. Anyang, how are you guys doing? I'm here just to be good looking. Not as good looking as AJ's beard, but like, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and we do we do have the CEO, am I correct? The CEO of Delilah Studios, the man with the greatest beard I think we've seen <laughs> in 2020. AJ, how are you doing today, brother? Hey, yeah, thanks a lot for having us on here. Really appreciate it. And AJ is so awesome. We have a huge time difference. Of course, you guys know I'm in Texas. He's in the UK. And he was gracious enough to uh, take time to talk with us today. And apparently, because he is a game developer, I believe him, he does not sleep. So this is probably midday for him. So this, <laughs> I, I am really excited. So I do want to ask you right off the top, uh, AJ, kind of give us a little uh, backstory about Delilah Studios, how you guys came to be, and a little bit about, you know, where you are right now. Yeah, sure. Um, so in a lot, a lot of ways, we're, it's a cliche story. So uh, it was founded by myself and my former kind of co-founder, Craig. We were two guys in a garage with no money. Um, so we both, both our backgrounds was, uh, we started as a, a role called a game content developer at Jagex. Um, so Jagex are the guys that are known for making RuneScape. Yeah, RuneScape, yeah. <laughs> um, so I worked there on a game which never came out called Stellar Dawn, which we were told we weren't allowed to call RuneScape in space, but it was basically <laughs> RuneScape in space. Um, and my role was kind of part designer, part developer. So like I would design my quests and then I'd actually build them. Um, and then Craig ended up joining there in my last year. Um, and I was ended up being like his mentor that got assigned. And then I left there to join Bossa Studios, who you might know from Surgeon Simulator mm -hmm. nowadays. Um, mm -hmm. And they're like, I think they're over 100 people now, but I was employee number nine, I think, at Bossa Studios. Um, Holy crap. <laughs> and Craig, when I left Jagex, I said to Craig, look, you know, it's great here right now, but in six months, you might feel like you need a change. Give me a call. And about six months later, he gave me a call. He then joined Bossa with me. Um, we worked on their very first game called Monster Mind, um, which was this little kind of, it was a social game, I guess it was Facebook. So it was before mobile gaming was really a big thing. Um, it came out, it was a fun little game, but we ended up winning a BAFTA award over here. And um, kind of after we picked that up, we decided kind of it was a good time for us to kind of maybe go and do our own thing. Like the way we said it is at the time, you know, we didn't have mortgage, we didn't have any kids that we knew about. Um, so. <laughs> You know, we, we thought we'd do this thing. So, yeah, we, we literally kind of, for me, from my mum's garage, him from his girlfriend's mum's spare bedroom, and we had the equivalent of about $4,000 between us, um, and that was it. We just kind of left our lovely, cushy London jobs and kind of went for it. Um, wow. And then, yeah, kind of that was scary enough. It was eight years ago in June, and kind of since then we're now... Uh, Craig's left. Craig's at a different studio now, but there's now 23 of us full time at Dalala. Um, we've got our own kind of office premises in the little town I grew up in. Um, obviously, the last thing we did was Battletoads with Rare and Microsoft, and kind of at its biggest, including our contract partners. I think the team was nearly 70 people on that. Um, so it was a bit of a beast. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, we've gone kind of from too many guys in a garage, and we were like <laughs> five many guys in a garage, and now we're an assortment of better smelling people in a <laughs> <laughs> that, that's awesome so um with battletoads it was it was originally teased in my opinion when we saw phil spencer come out i believe at e3 with the battletoads shirt were you guys already in talks with creating battletoads at that point we like oh yeah i'm working this game already or was this like later on down the road no so yeah so like we so our first involvement, in fact, I don't know if, I, if this has been spoken about yet, so you might be getting the full scoop here. So I started pitching Battletoads games to Craig Duncan, who runs Rare. Yes. Uh, the year I met him was the year we started the studio, 2012. And um, my first Battletoads pitch was awful, like a really bad idea, like good job it never got made. <laughs> um, 
And for years, like every time I'd meet up with Craig, because he's a friend and a mentor, I'd be like, oh, please call me a battle toads, please call me. And he was always like, you're not quite ready, you're not quite ready. Um, and then it would have been around 2016, um, we just kind of had a project cancelled and we kind of took him through what we've been doing and we've kind of found our feet by this point and we've kind of fallen into what we do now, which is this like, you know, the 2D hand-drawn kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And he was like, okay, you know, maybe it's worth having that conversation. Um, and so we started pitching Battletoads in 2016, um, kind of the, what would become the game we made. Um, mm -hmm. But we didn't actually get it going until this, and this is funny. So I don't know if you remember in 2018 when we did the teaser trailer. Yes. We did the whole, um, so we signed the contract about two days before that. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> we weren't even making the game when that trailer came out. Um, we were literally like, that trailer was made by me, our animation director, Eric, who didn't work for me full time. So he animated all his evenings. And the guy who used to do my my band's music videos when I was a teenager. So <laughs> I think we were sandwiched like all these trailers come up, which cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then, our trailer cost us about twelve hundred dollars to put together. The voiceover guy I got for Fiverr.com. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, so yeah, so like it was proper, like you know, living to our kind of independent roots. But yeah, we when Phil wore that shirt, nothing was being made, um, and wow. we were kind of. I was I was excited, you know, I was a Battle Toads fan, and even if it wasn't me, I wanted to see someone making it. Um, yeah. And it just so happened a few years after that, we actually were the ones announcing. That's interesting because I always wow. thought Phil was teasing, "Hey, Battletoads is coming out soon," but really he was just wearing a Battletoads shirt. Battletoads shirt. <laughs> yeah. Phil's a massive Battletoads fan, and I think for Phil, he probably not. I don't think he did it as a tease to the audience. I think that was probably him going, "Someone needs to give us a good Battletoads pitch." Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I think, yeah. You know, he was showing there is still kind of an interest in that IP, especially from him. Um, so, and they were just looking for the right pitch. That's, that's, that's awesome, man. Now, now, now I got a story to tell people say, like, Hey, you know, <laughs> but I do, <laughs> I do want to talk about something that you brought up. We talked about the, the art style you guys went with, right? So another game that came out Oof. this year that I, that I love the franchise is where streets of rage. And I'm once I saw streets of rage. I was like, no, but when I played it, I was like, yes, <laughs> this looks amazing. And the same thing with Battletoads. I saw it and I was like, no. And then I was like, yes. This is And it's it's not a knock on the studio. We've talked about this before, especially with when Shoots of Rage and we saw the Battletoads art. Like it was it was one of those ones we're so used to a specific art style, especially for Streets of Rage and Battletoads, like it's supposed to look a certain way. And then when we saw it, it's like, Oh, why did you go that art style? But now that we've played it, played both of the games, like, oh, okay but it doesn't take away from it in the world that it is now it's like oh okay but i know fame is gonna ask the same question why <laughs> not, not in like a negative way but why but like why that art style instead of something else yeah and look even if it was a negative please definitely throw any negative questions you've got like i've got no <laughs> issue with that like um mm -hmm. yeah like you know this, this was what i wanted from day one um like I knew that kind of if I was going to reboot the Battle Toads franchise or do this sequel, kind of wherever it was going to land, um, what I didn't want to do is I didn't just want to make something. I didn't. I don't do pixel art. It's not my interest. Like there's amazing people that do it, and there's beautiful pixel art games. But you know, the same way that I was raised on Battle Toads, I was raised on Cartoon Network and Nicktoons and mm -hmm. kind of yeah. oh, man after know, my heart. You know, and like. <laughs> You know, my favorite, one of my favorite games of all time is Earthworm Jim, Earthworm Jim 2, right? And um, yes. we've got a lot of history there in that our animation director, Eric, his first ever job was cleaning up the line work on Earthworm Jim 1 and 2. Um, our friends, no the guys who just did the, the, visual, the Toad redesigns with me, like that was Mike Dietz and Ed Schofield. And Mike Dietz was animation director on uh, Aladdin, Jungle Book, Earthworm Jim 1, Earthworm Jim 2, Cool Spot. Oh. And kind of so I knew cool spot. That. Oh, cool spot's <laughs> very good. And like, the thing that amazes me, you look at that era of games, and I'm not gonna, I'll try to get back on track, but that era of games, <laughs> like, Cool Spot was a 7-up tie-in. Like, that was for 7-up. Right? Global Black <laughs> was bloody Super Soaker and McDonald's, right? Like, right? Like, franchise tie-ins used to be amazing. 
Um, Don't get me started on Pepsi Man, though. <laughs> <laughs> Game is <laughs> destroys childhoods. <laughs> but yeah, and like, so when we were doing Battle Toads, kind of, I knew I wanted a lot of Mike influence in there. Like, I wanted that kind of the Earthworm Jim kind of style to come through, and I, I just love the old Cartoon Network stuff, and you know, the Nick mm -hmm. stuff. I'm obsessed with like our real monsters with Ren and Stimpy. Oh, yes. Um, yep. And for me, like, when I think of the stuff that got me interested in the creative stuff, it was Battletoads, and it was those cartoons. And, like, in my mind, Battletoads looked like that. Like, for me, Battletoads Arcade is an awesome game, but that mm -hmm. wasn't really what Battletoads was for me. It was, yeah. it was that 1991 NES game. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So kind of, when we first come into Approach to Style, the thing I wanted to start with before we did anything else was the Toads. Um, so Mike and Ed and Eric, we did about... I want to say somewhere between 200 to 300 designs of the toads, and I've got them all. And I, I mean, we've got some weird ones. <laughs> like, um, and kind of, we started honing in on like, I started finding the things that I found really appealing, and we kind of edged and edged. And then the toads that you've seen, we had the slightly more detailed versions, but they didn't necessarily read as well animated. Mm. Um, and it was important for us that we didn't just have designs that were good to look at but designs that made sense in motion and for the game um and then once we had those kind of it was the art style really built out from there it was all about you know we have we have game pillars and like one of our game pillars was making a playable cartoon and everything we did had to drive to that like it was always asked that question of like is, is this a playable cartoon um and i knew i knew there'd be a lot of people upset with me um and you know but at the same time, the thing I told the team for the last two years is like, if you make something that no one hates, then no one loves it, right? It, those emotions, like you don't get one right. without the other, you know? And we, look at our scores on Metacritic, you know? We've got a game that's got 100 and we've got a game that's got 40 and it's the mm -hmm. same game. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's amazing because those extreme emotions live side by side. Um, and I think if we played it safe and we just tried to maybe do like the Battletoads arcade aesthetic, like, we wouldn't have been true to ourselves and I think we would have ended up we probably wouldn't have even pleased the Battletoads arcade fans like we probably would have made them feel like we were just being too derivative mm -hmm. and then we yeah. wouldn't have captured any new fans like the, the way I they don't like me saying this the way I pitched it to Rare was look we can't we can't li rely on nostalgia because the problem is that I was a Battletoads fan I'm 36 this year even though I look 50 um <laughs> you know I'll, no, I, was no. a I was a Battletoads fan. I was a young Battletoads fan, right? Like, there's a good chance that a third of the original Battletoads fans are dead. Like, let's be honest. Like, you know, the people that... Yeah. Bought, <laughs> like, they could yeah. be dead. And a lot of them are my age and can't necessarily play games for as much anymore. Mm -hmm. So what we really need is, like, we need a way to kind of give something that will give people the same feeling we had when we were kids playing Battletoads. We need a, a, a whole new audience. New generation of kids. You know, it's, we're not, we shouldn't be making games for ourselves. We shouldn't be making games for a bunch of 36 year old, you know, fat yeah. dudes. <laughs> like, no, what you hey like, man. So it's, yeah, you know, it's, it, I knew, I knew it was going to be received in mixed ways. Um, I love it mm. though. Honestly. Like it's, it's been a dream come true to see this game come to life in this visual style. So like, yeah, it's, it was 100% a conscious choice, but I did know going in that there were going to be people angry with me. <laughs> so I want to ask, like, kind of piggyback off of this point. So how did you focus on the noise? Because as you know, we had Rash and Killer Instinct. And when everyone heard mm -hmm. Battletoads was coming, they instantly thought we were getting that Battletoads. Because people forgot so did, about So did you guys the hear the noise? Game. You guys hear the noise, and did that affect you guys at all? Like hearing like the people, you know, not being as happy with the art style because of Rash and Killer Instinct. I mean, I I heard it all, and um, I cared about it all, but it didn't change anything for me. Like, you know, and it's not because I don't care what the fans think, but the problem is when I got into games, you know, a decade and a half ago, um, Twitter didn't exist. You know, yeah. <laughs> you start making a game and have everyone in the world knowing you were making that game and everyone telling you how you should be making that game. Um, mm. And 
So like I've grown with that and like we have a studio have kind of existed and grown with that. And so all I really did, to be honest, was I just asked the team to try and avoid it. I said like, look, you know, nothing good will come of you guys reading Twitter and reading mm-hmm. YouTube comments because it, there's a lot more people that are happy to be negative vocally than there are people that are to be positive. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we did take feedback as well. Like, you know, I think I said in our, in the, in the Battletoads discord the other day that if you look at the E3 and Gamescom, they're the same build. Like, if you look at that, a um, yeah. lot of criticism for being slow, right? And initially, mm-hmm. initially my instinct was like, you know, like, I don't care. And then I was reading <laughs> the comments and like one person put like, if you watch this video at 1.2 times speed, the game actually looks a lot better. And I was like, if you watch my video at 1.2 times speed. <laughs> yeah, it's even voice in your head. I did it and I was like, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> And I quickly changed all the speeds in the game, and I was like, uh, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so we, we we took on we did take on feedback, but with the visuals, like I I knew what I knew we had it. I knew mm-hmm. we'd been through the journey. I knew we had what we needed. And Rash and Killer Instinct is this super realistic thing that works for Killer Instinct. But you know, <laughs> we started doing all the Tex Avery over the top poses. You know, the big take the bosses. You know, it doesn't yeah. work as well with something that looks like that, you know, because you expect to see that from a cartoon character. Yeah. I got to ask, because we're talking about, you know, eh, two, one, two, f- put at this a uh, highest speed. How do, you, how do you deal with criticism? Because I know there was a lot of people. We Dreamcast guy, we know the fame. He was like the... Battletoads is a mini game simulator. Like, how do you deal with criticism like that? Like, I like the game. Mini games maybe a little bit too much at some parts, but I quite enjoy Battletoads. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with uh-huh. criticism like that? Yeah, it's it's hard. Like it is hard. Um, the stuff about the mini games that kind of rolls off of me. Um, it's really interesting. I think what it's shown is for a lot of people who felt that way, I think they feel more like Battletoads Arcade was their game. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And and let's be honest, it doesn't help that most people didn't get past the, fir- the third level of the original match. This is true. Um, this true. is true. It's true. <laughs> but to me, kind of the magic of that original Battletoads, once, you know, I acquired it via ROMs and emulators when I was a kid and I could save each day, to be, um, <laughs> was the different genres. Like, I love the fact that, like, I was doing a beat em up and now I'm on a bike and now I'm on a platforming level in a snow level. and. and mm-hmm. So I knew for us that that's what we were doing. For me, I was like, we're doing a genre mashup. We're doing a playable cartoon and a genre mashup. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what's really interesting is that like my favorite act in our game is Act Three, and that's the one that a lot of people really hate. That's the one where it's like you know the space shooter. Mm-hmm. The, oh, I the love that. Stations, the platforming, <laughs> um, and like that for me, that's my favorite bit of the game. Um, yeah. And it shows you my bias, right? Like. As a creator, I'm instantly like, oh, I love playing this. That's great. And then I see people's feedback and I'm like, oh, wow, like that level's 10 times harder than it registered as for me. And oh, I thought everybody would understand emergency stations because we put that screen at the start that says there's a pattern at the top. But like, everyone's like, oh, it, should I be, sw- can I swear on this podcast or is this a clean podcast? Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Okay. You're good. Don't worry. <laughs> and, then, and everyone on Twitter is like, what the fuck is this? Like, this, <laughs> yeah. I don't, and what I've got to do. And like I'm like, oh wait, like when I play games, I pay no attention to the tutorial screens. I just skip them. Um <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I mean the, the criticism for me, um, you know, I stayed up until the press embargo released, which was about two AM our time. Mm-hmm. Um and I cried with happiness when the eight came in from the <laughs> IGN, and then I cried with sadness when the game informer like five came in. Um Oof. it's it's horrible, right? Like, you don't make any, you, you don't make, you get targets for Metacritic, right? Your publishers mm-hmm. always tell you, we're aiming for this, but you're always aiming for tens. Like, I know you won't get it, yeah. you're not a gamer, you know, you're not going to get a 10, but <laughs> yeah. no, no one in this world sets out to make a game that gets six out of 10, seven out of 10. You always are aiming for the best. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you fall short of that, it does, it, it hurts. And you can get, you know, you can get 150, eight out of tens and you get two four out of tens and all you think about is those so fours yep. um, yeah and all that really mattered to me was the team like i just didn't 
they worked their asses off, like ridiculously so, and I just didn't want them to be hit by it. So like, we shielded ourselves. We did this thing on our Slack where like we had a channel for press and public, but the rule was like 7.5 upwards only. So it meant that everyone who wanted could just go there and just see positivity. Um, mm -hmm. And even me, like, I've read all of, I read Marty Silver's write up, you know, the guy that hates Battle Toads and mm -hmm. said he loved art. And I have yeah. what, watched Zero Punctuation because I knew he was going to tear us a new arsehole. Um, <laughs> but all, all the other reviews, I've only read the little box with the score in and the pros and cons because no good is going to come of me reading them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Because positives to me don't really help me, and negatives right now I can't do anything about. Like, I'll go back to it in the future to learn from it. Um, mm -hmm. and when it's constructive criticism, that's awesome. Like, the Battletoads Discord is fan made, and a lot of the guys who started that haven't enjoyed our game. Like, they wanted something else, but they're super constructive about it. And so mm -hmm. that's useful to me because I can read that and I can go, oh, you know what? They hate that, but I meant <clears> to do that. That's fine. But this thing this is a failure of me. Like, I should have been better at this thing. Um, sorry, look, I, I'll waffle on. In answer to your question, criticism okay. sucks, right? Like, my job is to try and help us learn from that criticism. Um, but instinctively, I just want to shield the team from it because they're all awesome and they've all just put everything into this game. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, but, like, I, I think the team have loved the positivity, like the positive reviews have landed really well with them. And I know I'm a little bit jaded and it doesn't hit me as much, the positivity. Um, <laughs> but it's great to kind of like, I really feel the game's success. Like for me, like we achieved what what I wanted us to, Rare and Microsoft are happy. Mm -hmm. um, and most importantly for me, the team seemed really, really happy with how it's gone. Yeah, so, I mean, it is a success without, oh, sorry, love. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Without a, without a doubt, I think Battletoads is... And I was just about to ask, like, what is the support you have for your team? But you've you've pretty much outlined that. It's like, it's nice to see because when you reboot... we I mean, we've seen it with recently Mulan. There's been death threats for people that have worked on the game or the movie or that are rebooting a game. It's like, I, it's nice to see a studio take care of its people and not just like, oh, you're another number. We don't really care about you. And that's what I like to see because I'm I'm coming from the creative side where like I do concept art so it's like oh okay these people are taken care of it's like yes the studio actually cares about their people behind you know they're not just a number they're not just a Twitter handle you guys care that's that's some of oh, the things you, you know, get from sweaty men in a garage so <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all that matters. they honestly are they're all that matters like you know we've been a studio for over eight years now um we've had mm -hmm. employees uh, you know well. So our technical director, Ben, he's been with us eight years in December, and our senior programmer, Chris, he joined us two weeks after the studio formed, and he's still here. Um, all, all that matters to this team, because we've survived for eight years with no successes, right? You know, like, you look at our track record, and we made Janksy, which was a little mobile game we made in eight weeks, we made for no money, and then we made Overruled, which the five of us made from the garage with no money, didn't make back its publisher money. Like, we, we've not been yeah. living off of the money of our successes. Instead, what we've lived off of is the fact that as a team, we've stuck together and that we've delivered high quality to clients at times, even if it doesn't make its way up to the public every time. But like, you know, I, I've, I'm not in this for money. Like, I'm still driving the same car. I've had the same car for since I got into games. It's got 205,000 miles on my Woo! <laughs> Oh, but Boy. <laughs> all that matters is those because this, these are the reason I come in and do it every day because I get to work with such incredible people. Yeah. So I want to make a statement that leads to a question. So me and my son, he's he's ten. We our thing to play together are beat 'em up, Streets of Rage. And when Battle was coming out, I said, Hey son, come here, come here, watch this. This is the next game we playing. We counted down to the days it dropped, right? So <laughs> we get the game, we start it, and it kind of goes to the mini games too. I sort of cursed my 10 year old out out of anger because he kept getting us. <laughs> he kept, I, I, was like, yeah. I was like, I was like, what are you doing? Like, you get, you be there. I'm like frustrated beyond belief. And I like that's, uh, that's taking a picture one. That should be you all yes. day. Like, I had to apologize. I said, son, I apologize, you know, for earlier and, and my, my prior transgressions. And so that kind of led to like, 
Did you guys at a point say, this is Battletoads, we need the difficulty, we need to... Because people remember the old school Battletoads was difficult. It was a difficult game. It was frustrating. I mean, difficult's a word for it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you broke stuff. And so there were moments, even even we, because we didn't play on Battle. I, I wasn't going to put them on Battletoads right at the beginning. We, we, we played on, on, on normal, right? And it was still some, especially with, even with the bikes. So I'm like, dude, like you, you're killing me, small. So, and <laughs> when you guys are making the game, did you make a point to make sure, yeah, we're going to make this as difficult as it should be with the names Battletoads? So, let me start this with a question. If you were going to rate the difficulty of normal out of ten, what would you kind of give it? Like, how difficult do you think it is out of ten? People are gonna make fun of me, but I would still say that was still like an eight. And, and, and if you don't know me, that really? was like an 8 out of 10. It was difficult. especially. No, no, I, <laughs> I, I think you're right. Like, I think people are yeah. agreeing. And so for us, we thought going out, it was probably a 5 or a 6. And we didn't realize it was an 8 until the public <laughs> played. Like, like on, honestly, like, we, we were like, okay, you know, we don't need to be easy. Like, Tadpole will be the game where we take some of the walls out of the turbo tunnel. It'll be mm-hmm. the one where we make the enemies weaker and... Battle Toad will get rid of invincibility. We'll ta- will add- make it harder. But Toad is kind of like to- Toad is like what we want nor- normal mm-hmm. to be. Um, mm-hmm. But we got you know we were playing this game every day for two years. Um, yeah. We, so. we didn't, you know when the pandemic hit, it kind of put all user testing out the window that we could have done um, because yeah. we couldn't get groups of three people in a room together. <laughs> um, for the yeah. last you know for the last what uh, March. For the last like five months, we couldn't even play it free player ourselves. Um, Jesus. So we went out the door genuinely thinking we'd made a game <laughs> with probably a five or six out of ten in difficulty. And then <laughs> everyone played it and was just like, we were missed one. What the hell? Leg level. Fuck you guys. We were missing. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, dirt bag boss fight in space level. Fuck you guys. And we were just like, oh, oh, um, yeah. I, I guess. guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, Battle Toad was meant to be our kind of like, hey, if you love the classic games, you might like this a bit more. Tadpole was meant to be our like, hey, if you're gonna play with younger audience, you know, this is probably safer. And Toad's like, hey, if you want a nice medium experience but yeah like it <laughs> no. it was much harder than yeah. it was like it was much hard. like no one's going to take the mick at you for saying an 8 out of 10 because I think you're spot on I think looking at people playing it you know it, it probably is an 8 out of 10 on difficulty so difficult I, I told myself like, yeah we're, we're, we're going to play on easy next time <laughs> yeah. we just, I, I want to finish it with them but it's just so freaking hard yeah. just, just do what I do Load up a, a ROM and emulator and play the original Battletoads <laughs> and see how much he's like. Oh, this is so easy compared to that. <laughs> Dad, we can't get past the third level, man. Come on. <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? It's like you know when we were making Turbo Tunnel, we were like, look, we wanna we wanna make a level that people enjoy. We don't want to become infamous. Like we don't. Get- <laughs> that's the destroyer of worlds. Uh, that's a Thanos, oh. man. That snapped me so much. I was like, oh, <laughs> I so guess. When we first signed the deal, it was like when we first signed, when we started pitching, Gemma, our production director, um, mm-hmm. you know, she was more like Gen- she did Genesis and then Dreamcast, and then she wasn't really into games, so she'd never played it. So I was like, look, mm. I've got Rare Replay, come round. We got to that level, and obviously they added Rewind on Rare Replay. Yes. Mm-hmm. It still took us two, three hours with Rewind to get through it two player. Honestly, like. It's hard. <laughs> It's a hard goddamn game, <laughs> and it's such, it's a, such a shame in a lot of ways because there's so much good stuff after that hot that hover bike level yes, in yes, the original. Yes, um, but most people have never seen it. <laughs> yeah, they they they've given up yeah. at the, at that point. I gotta say, as somebody who's colorblind, uh, I usually look at games for hey yo where's where's the color settings because I can't when I play Overwatch it's got to be a certain setting I can't see anything. But Battletoads, I don't know what it is. Y'all done... Oh, God, I'm about to sound so hillbilly-ish. Y'all done did it right. <laughs> and I could, like, the colors were on point, And I was like, oh. I was like, at first I was upset that there was no colorblind assist mode. But I'm like, oh, okay, I see it. It's not bad. It's It's pretty good. You guys, I don't know if you guys brought in somebody to help you or something. But you guys did it on point. 
Which leads into my next question. You guys gonna release art books? Oh. I mean, firstly, that's great to know that kind of as somebody who is colorblind that you kind of were able to get on with it. Um, Chris, the senior programmer I told you about, he's he's also colorblind. Um, so one person isn't enough, but wherever we can, we always be, or we're always like, Chris, can you look at this? Um, yeah. And our UI UX designer, Karem, as well, he's very like, any time he was doing a new game mode and he was doing that, he would always apply filters that would kind of level it out as if it was cut like somebody colorblind viewing. Um, yeah. There's so much more we would like, you know, if we'd had bigger scope, more time, more money, the classics, there's more stuff we would have done, right? But I'm really happy to hear that, you know, you were able to enjoy it still. Um, oh yeah, without a doubt. It was easy to see everything easy. Like when, I, when we first got into the hover bike levels, I was like, oh no, this is going to be a challenge. But no, everything was like, perfect i was like oh i'm surprised because oh, usually great. it's it's minging halfway through and it's like oh no 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 but you guys did it i don't know what you guys did in your thank you chris but <laughs> you guys did it <laughs> well that, that that makes me really happy to hear um and yeah art book um so obviously like rare own battle toads and microsoft own rare and mm -hmm. I, I hope there will be an art book there is a ton of amazing art in that game but there's also such mm -hmm. you know we kept every pencil test of animation, every you know, every pencil <sighs> test of art. Like we've got all of that saved, um, and you know, Microsoft have got all of that. Um, there's there's horror stories my team will tell you where I cut stuff off <laughs> before we've done art. So there's some some like unreleased stuff that there's art for, and some characters that didn't make the cuts. And you know, I'd love for people <sighs> to see like you know. Feed the fantasy. This is what it looked like at release, but actually, this is what it looked like in pre-production back in 2018. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, look, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I I harassed Rare <laughs> regularly. <about laughs> hey, you did an art book for Fear Thieves. Is there going to be an art book? Is there going to be an art book? Um, and all Rare, I can say, I'll buy one. Oh, there you go. All I can say is I'll buy one and watch this space. Um, I have all the hope in the world that it will happen. Um, I just don't mm -hmm. know anything beyond that. Okay. So Cause I'm like, oof, I want to see the art, especially the behind the scenes stuff. I mean, you can hold it for like 20 years and do the Tomb Raider. You're like, <laughs> uh, was it 20 years of Tomb Raider? Like, all right, you can hold it, but like, I want to see it now. <laughs> I mean, people have waited 26 years for a new Battletoads game. We can't yes. keep them waiting yeah. even longer, can we, for art? So, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so, being, I'm, I'm 32 or 33 this year. Old man. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an old man. So, one one of the things I loved growing up was Saturday morning. Saturday morning cartoons where cartoons. they were life, right? Saturday morning, you knew what it was. You get up, mm -hmm. watch cartoons. Even before you cut the grass, you're watching cartoons. Playing mm -hmm. Battletoads brought me back to that feeling of being up on Saturday morning watching cartoons. The cutscenes, it, it felt like a Saturday morning cartoon. Was that purposely done? Did you guys want to give it that? I'm not gonna lie. I told people on Twitter, I was like, "So when does the Battletoads show come out? Because this needs to be an actual like, right. where's CW? I mean, uh, Cartoon Network. Someone needs to call oh, and please. say, make this a show. Don't put it on Apple TV if you do it. Like, <laughs> don't do the Ubisoft thing. Like, put it out and let us watch it. Because I would watch that cartoon every single weekend. So <laughs> was that was that purposely a, a thing you guys were going for? Because I definitely felt it if it was. Yeah, 100%, man. Like, you know, this wasn't a game written by game developers. Like, you know, Tom Kaufman, our lead writer, like, so he was a, <laughs> he was one of the writers and producers on the first three seasons of Rick and Morty. Um, you know, I Wayne knew I recognized that name. <laughs> Wayne and Kelsey, the our other two writers, they're like, you know, they do stuff for Cartoon Network. So, like, it was, you know, and I, the whole idea, the whole pipeline is they wrote it like they would write a cartoon. And then I, I used my role as like game creative director to help translate that into game. So mm -hmm. we actually wrote the whole story for the game was written like a cartoon. We did, you know, Tom was under Dan Harmon, so we did the Dan Harmon story circle. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah, the act, you know, obviously then when we did the kind of the cutscenes, um, we worked with Bardell, um, who are an amazing animation house up in Canada, and they do like the joy of Canada right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and Bardell do like besides Rick and Morty, they do like Teen Titans Go. Um, and then yeah, you know the voice actors was Ryan Ridley from Rick and Morty, and then it was obviously Eric Bowser, who is currently 
Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Splinter mm. in Turtles, um, and Echo Kellum, who he's done a bit of voice work on Mick and Morty, but obviously he was in um, he was one of the stars of uh, uh, Arrow on the CW. Oh, um, yes. So he was yeah. In, so yeah, like it was all when we went for the Playboy cartoon, and I was able like Tom's a friend, and we were able to build like a team of cartoon writers, and then a cartoon studio, and then cartoon voice actors like. That, that was all we wanted to do. We wanted it to feel like you were playing through a, a Saturday morning cartoon. That's, that's, I felt it. And I, like, I tweeted it out and people were like, holy crap. Like it is. I'm like, yeah, this is, this, yeah. Is, I got, I, I, I it, it resonated differently. You know, if, if you wouldn't, if you didn't grow up in that era, maybe you don't feel it as much. But like growing up in that era where like it wasn't, you know, it was Saturday morning cartoons were like everything. So to have that feeling uh, was amazing. And I, I applaud you guys for giving it. I, I felt like a kid again. And I'm, I'm like, she calls me old. I'm, I don't consider oh, myself man. old, but I feel like a kid again. So I, I guess I don't have a question to follow up with that. It's a, it's a kind of a thank you for going with that route because it was. It, it, I definitely appreciated it. Oh, well, mm-hmm. thank you. Like it, it means a lot to hear that. Like you know, it's the biggest compliment we can ever get in the world is when someone turns around and says, you know, not just that we enjoyed this, but like when you turn around and say, hey, I felt like I was playing a Saturday morning cartoon and one of the first things we wrote on a blackboard was, you know, make people feel like they're playing a Saturday morning cartoon. Like it's the, that's 10 times more rewarding to me than at any 10 out of 10 review. Like, because it mm-hmm. just made like people understood what we were going for. And that's how you get into like that legacy status where, mm-hmm. I mean, you could go with the super hard games like Battletoad and, and Hagane, or you could get like, this this is a game that makes you feel like you know you were twelve again, and I mean fame's a lot older than me. <laughs> no, you're not that much older. Um, I just turned twenty seven, but it's just like yeah, I remember Saturday morning cartoons, and yeah, this game was like oh, Battle Toads. Yeah, okay, what's up? <laughs> How you doing? It's right back there. Well, that's awesome. That's that's great. And you know the great thing about Saturday morning cartoons is like they still exist, and every yes. Mm-hmm. Every kind of few, even like you know, the, the very, very slight age difference between you two, because Fame's still a young, youthful person, um, right? And, you know that you had different Saturday morning cartoons. Like you probably got the back end of some of the stuff that Fame watched, the same way that Fame got some of the back end of the stuff I watched. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. we had our new stuff as well. You know, like when I was a kid, GI Joe just about still existed. Yes, GI so Joe was the shit. <laughs> right but like i was moving on at that point to the newer stuff and like so there's always like these transitions so i think everyone's always going to have like saturday morning cartoons even if they're not on saturday mornings anymore like i think yep. you know, we've all got that feeling and i think that i think that's awesome and that's one of the reasons i just love cartoons because they're they're timeless but they're always reinventing I will say we got the better better half because I, one day I walked in my son's room and I said, "What are you watching?" It's like Uncle Grandpa, and I was like, "No, we're not. We're not watching something called Uncle Uncle Grandpa." I mean, Things I've gotten weird. Not to criticize modern cartoons, but the only one I watch is uh, the Fabulous World of Gumball. I think that's the name. Gumball because awesome. they got too many uh, dirty jokes in there. Gumball is meant for adults. All the cartoons look the same. <laughs> Gumball is not meant for kids. The, I'm so no. glad kids have their innocence because some of those jokes I'm like oh yeah yeah but yeah. if you can I would like to ask you uh, unless Huggy did you have another question I'm sorry oh, I got a couple questions because <laughs> what, what I'm transitioning on will be a, a big transition so please go okay uh, so this is like a I, I try to ask developers this what's what's a game that's out that you wish you could have worked on oh oh uh, that's oh, it's interesting, right? Triple um, A or indie, like, because I don't know, there's somebody that I wish could have, you know, done another game. But, yeah. I mean, if it's me personally, rather than like Delala, like, mm-hmm. um, and if I if I didn't have Delala and there was another studio and game I could work on, like, it'd be Psychonauts Two. Um, oh, yeah. Tim Tim Schafer is my absolute hero. Like he's the reason I make video games, all the LucasArts stuff, and all the Double Fine. So like, I'd love to be working on Psychonauts Two right now. Um, but also the other end, like, man, Ori, the latest Ori game within the week. Oh. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's hundreds of games I've played, but in terms of kind of stuff I'd work on, like it, you know, I'd like, like I think. Double fine, anything double fine touch would hundred percent be where I would want to be if I wasn't at Delala. 
Yeah. They make some dang good games, man. Uh, like, I do want to ask what? you about Nani? Some, something upcoming. No, I, I'm going I'm to I'm hold off on that. I will. I promise. But okay. I do want to ask you about something coming up later on. But I do want to ask right quick, quick, in between, because we she talked about games you could be working on. Is there any chance um, would you guys want to continue making the Battletoads games? Like, was there any chance of a possible another Battletoad game coming from you guys? And if so, can you please call Arc Systems? Is it Arc Systems who has it now? So you can't create Battletoads versus Double Dragon. I'm just saying. Just putting it out there. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there because, you know, that popped in my mm-hmm. head. <laughs> First of all, Battle Toads Double Dragon, the best game in the oh. franchise, hands down, including mine. Yeah. Battle Toads Double Dragon is the best game in the franchise. So franchise. good. Um, so good. You know, yeah. I would always talk about my love for the original, but like the first one I played was Battle Toads Double Dragon. My parents probably spent $500 renting that from Blockbuster <laughs> when we could have bought it for the Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, in terms of another battle toads, I'm going to answer this as Dalala. I'm not answering this in an official capacity. I would 100% make another one. Um, there is a lot of stuff at the end of our one that some people haven't picked up on yet, where we left mm-hmm. it open in some ways. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Tom, the writer, and me, um, we've already discussed kind of where we would go with it, like what stories we want to tell. Like, yeah, I, I love this universe. I got just an unprecedented amount of freedom to kind of do what I wanted with this this universe, you know? Um, and I, yeah, we, we'd love to do another one. Um, whether we do it now straight away, I don't know. Like, I think for us, like, you know, this has been two years of our life working on it, two years of our life pitching it. Um, I think there's something to be said for having a different project in between potentially but look you know if if the if the phone call was to come through right now like if craig rare and microsoft were to call me like i couldn't sit here and say i'd say no but yeah we'd, we'd love to do it you'd shave one your one beard day. off too don't forget <laughs> okay. hey, oh, oh yeah uh, okay <laughs> um, but yeah and in terms of the crossover look if that opportunity come that'd be awesome right like I'd, you know that would be and i'd love as well like partnering with someone i think would be really interesting like if we did like getting some like way forward in, involved and doing mm-hmm. like battle Toad double dragon with like us and way forward working together potentially um yeah yeah i mean i could see you guys in brahalla yeah oh my yeah. god yes that'll make yeah, me same actually as like, like uh, whatever but like yeah brahalla <laughs> that'll make me actually play brahalla that'll make, that'll make me play <laughs> i've been it. playing it since uh beta so yeah that's my game yeah look i love this world i've loved this universe i love these characters i've loved working with every single member of this team um so yeah hopefully in a few years time we can do another one of these podcasts and we'll be talking about the upcoming release for you know a second one just make sure you tell microsoft that you want to talk to us before well (laughs) (laughs) hopefully if we're doing this if we're doing this in two and three years, uh, we'll all be able to sit at a table. <laughs> uh, that would be nice. Like, we'll I mean, be able to have a pint. <laughs> like, you guys, you guys too big for me. I might come knocking <laughs> you. Like, hey, no, no. Do you want to talk about the new battle toads? And I'll be like, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry, but we've got four involved. We've got a four. Come on. Got I'm Canadian. I have time for everybody. Be like, AJ, I love that boy. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to him. That uh, what is your difficulties in the industry, and like, what do you wish you could have known getting going in the industry? Because I know you, you said Battle Toads has been your your magnum opus for right now. So, what what do you wish you could have known in your difficulties? Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think like the stuff that I really had not not even after four years in the industry, like the stuff I didn't know before I made a studio was just. The money side of things to be honest like you know the stress of having a team that you need to pay um not because paying them is a problem but because it's like okay well you know when we're in the garage if money had disappeared we would have found a way to make it work but you know i've got team members who since they started working for me have bought houses and have kids Mm -hmm. um and so that's a lot of pressure pitching as a small studio like you know my 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 studio title was ceo which i gave myself obviously um, <laughs> yeah. but i'm a game i'm still the games director the game director and creative director and because we're small what that means is like 
when we get to that last eight months of a project, which is so pivotal, suddenly I'm having to do pitching for the next project because we often live project to project mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, we're working with awesome IP, but what that means is like, we're not, we're not taking 50% on the back end. Like we make, we get paid to make the game. Um, yeah. So like, but there's, there's no conversations about that up front. You know what I mean? No one ever says to you before you start a studio, oh, by the way, like it can take you somewhere between six to 12 months to close a deal. So when you're making a game, be prepared that you have to start pitching the next thing at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the hard thing for me. And like, even now, like, especially as I'm getting a bit older, like the bit, that's, that's the bit I struggle with sometimes is like, all I want to do is put my focus on the game. And what that means mm -hmm. is that rather than, rather than basically being like, you know, okay, these four hours are for pitching these four hours, it ends up being, I work a day on the game and then I work all night on the pitching. Um, yeah. And then, you know, no one really warns you about anything when you start a studio. Like, I, I sometimes come across a little negative because when I go around to talk to universities, like, the thing that always oh. worries me is, like, I see a lot of other independent developers, and especially since, you know, the indie boom in 2012, like, yeah, I, I almost feel people are encouraged to, like, hey, straight out of uni, go start a studio with your mates, and, like, that's all yeah. you need. Like, that terrifies me, man. Like, that just terrifies me because... This shit is this shit is tough. Like it's mentally tough, it's physically mm -hmm. tough. Um, and I just like it's. I think there's just so many people that just rush, rush in because they want to be their own boss, and they rush into it, and then they learn all these horrible lessons. And at least with me, like I had a long-term colleague doing it with me, and I had four years of industry experience where it was like, okay, this stuff here, this is the actual problem. This stuff here is a passing problem. Um, so yeah, like making the games is hard, but like that's not the bit that ever worries me. Like I'm never sitting here going, "Oh shit, can we do this?" I'm always sitting here going, "Oh shit, when do I need to bring money in after we've done this?" Yeah. Yes, that's a uh... sort of speaking Man, on your next project. <laughs> so, nothing to fear. I see. Is, mm -hmm. a, uh, is there a next project or something you guys have working on? What can you tell us about this game that you guys are currently working on? So Nothing to Fear is actually what we were working on before we started Battletoads that we had to stop working on because of Battletoads. Oh, um, interesting nugget. So Nothing to Fear, like, yeah, we haven't actually, we haven't gone back to it yet. I'm not saying we're not going to, um, but Nothing to Fear was what we kind of... Had, after we'd come up a project in 2016 and we were looking for what to do, Nothing to Fear kind of came from some um, incubation work. And then that was the project that the 10 of us at the time were working on. So Nothing to Fear was like a, it was like a platformer meets adventure game. So it was kind of like an homage for my LucasArts kind of love of adventure games, but made a little bit more accessible in platforming form. Um, and the whole concept around that was that you were the boogeyman's son and fear had been removed from the world and the boogeyman had basically like grown depressed and kind of so to, <laughs> to help the boogeyman you were trying to bring fear back to the world and it was kind of all about like you go to a school and you do like the classic cliches to scare the high school students and you go to a supermarket and um and then as you were going you'd meet the boogeyman's old colleague so like the where his the werewolf was now a gym teacher at the school uh, <laughs> um, oh the Invisible Men were a, a gay couple on a honeymoon on a, a cruise ship, and like so, <laughs> and it was super lighthearted. Once again, it was like you know character designs from Mike Deets. It was animation team that we you know some of the animators that we had that ended up being on Battletoads. Um, yeah, and it, it was a lot of fun. And then we showed it publicly. I think two months before Battletoads came in, and then obviously Battletoads came in, and it had to be the whole team. Uh -huh. Like we you know we couldn't. Yeah. Um, so we might like I'd love to go back to it one day um, I wouldn't say I don't know for sure if it's our next thing or not but um, yeah it's, it's definitely sitting there then it says in production on the website because it's definitely not cancelled as far as I'm concerned don't cancel it that sounds I didn't amazing look it up on the website <laughs> <laughs> don't cancel it that sounds amazing that sounds like a lot of fun like well, maybe it's, what I'll do is I'll try and get you guys, I'll send you over the build that we took to EGX so you can actually <laughs> play the first couple of levels and see what you think. Don't, because I won't stop talking about it. And I'll <laughs> fame won't either. 
Oh, I mean, that's... you're like, yeah, this is this is gaudy. Yeah, <laughs> it's not finished, <laughs> but it's gaudy. <laughs> That's 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 awesome. That's really awesome to hear. I, I I I love the fact that you know you guys went in on on Battletoads, but you guys still have that project there. And from what it sounds like, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. So <laughs> I, I definitely look forward to you tweeting out that it's uh it's going to be complete. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you guys wish for the future of Delilah? Like, what what? I know you go, you know, nothing to fear, but like, what's your hopes in, I mean, 2020 has been the longest 10 years of our lives. But what do you wish? <laughs> what do you yeah. wish for the next five years? I mean, the first thing I'm looking forward to is actually getting the team in a room together again. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. we've just released a game and we haven't seen each other in seven months. Oh. Like, it's... And some well, of the- they're not going to recognize you. I hope you know that. <laughs> You're like, hey, where's AJ? Uh, oh, 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 that beard. What's up? Uh, but, but yeah, kind of next five years, like, you know, we'll get a little bit bigger, but I never want us to get too big. Like, I very much enjoy knowing everyone personally. Like, I like that. Um, yeah. I really enjoyed working on Battletoads. I really enjoy working with, like, existing worlds. And as long as we've got that creative freedom, I think that's really fun. So I'd love to stick doing that, you know, and a lot of conversations we've had with people moving forward are, like, you know, how we can help take some old IPs and some old, you know, not just games, but maybe other IPs or other cartoons and kind of bring them into kind of a new audience. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, look, all I want is to work with awesome people on awesome games and be able to pay everyone good money. And, like, if if I'm doing that, like, I'll do this for the rest of my life. And whether that means we end up making a game that sells 100 million copies and everyone can buy a house outright, great. But if it means that everyone gets paid good money and we live like this for the rest of my life, like, I'll I'll take that. Like, you know, just just want to work on things with awesome people. Do you guys think, because I live in Edmonton, which is the home of Bioware. I've met Casey Hudson before Mike Laidlaw went to Ubisoft. Well, he's not with anybody right now, I don't think. Uh, But before Mike Laidlaw left, I met him. Do you guys think you could do, because, I mean, Bioware is only two studios, Austin and Edmonton. Do you guys think you could, they make some of the greatest games people have ever played. Do you think you could be a studio like that? They're still relatively small, like, uh, maybe a hundred people per studio, but do you think you could uh, maintain that and make just the quality you make in with Battletoads? Like, yes, okay, whoever's watching, yes, I know you might have your criticisms about Battletoads, but it's still a good game comparatively because I know everybody makes fun of me for, for playing Anthem. Aha! Uh-huh. Well, whatever. <laughs> Y'all make fun of me, but do you think you can maintain that quality and keep a small, big studio kind of mentality? I think if we. If the day comes where we're ever, you know, over 40 people, I think at that point I would want to split it into multiple teams. Like, I think that would be like a two-team thing for us. Like, I don't... Because as soon as you get over, like, that 30, 40 number, you then start getting a weird balance of having to have a large number of managers rather than people that actually create stuff. Um, yeah. And that's not a slight on managers at all. Like, managers are really important. Um, yeah. But... I, I mean, it's hard. Like I'm a control freak. Like even I, like you know, stuff we're talking about for our next project, I'm trying to give up a little bit of the control I have. Um, so the idea of like if we have two projects, I can't I can't do two projects. So it means that like okay, I'm gonna have to trust someone else to be the creative director on one of them. And um, yeah. So yeah, I think I don't know if I could ever handle being Bioware big, um, but like I could definitely see us, you know, hitting that forty mark, maybe going to multiple teams one day, like. But like you said, two teams at most. But I think, like, I'm in the studio right now. Like, I don't think I could have Delala 2 in a different county. I've been going Delala 2 yeah. like there, like over the road. Like, yeah. So I can walk out one door, go across the road, go in the other, and be like, oh, look, I'm in a different studio. Bossman's yeah. here. Y'all start working. Bossman's in there. Yeah, we're working. Yeah, yeah Bossman's boss. here. <laughs> Cut out the donuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always wonder. Like, these. Not one hit wonder because that sounds awful, but like these one these studios that get the hits, it's okay, you're on the track to be these big studios. And I mean, yeah, Bioware, uh, they shut down Montreal and now there's only Austin and Edmonton, but it's like 
what what is what is the future for these studios? Because most of them don't like. Oh, I didn't plan on my game selling out like this or people covering it like this. So it's like I just want to know the future for the studio and what yeah. you guys are doing. Yeah, I mean it's weird, right? Like. When we started as two people, we didn't think we'd ever get bigger than six. And then when we were suddenly, right. we didn't think we'd get bigger than 12. And then we're 23 now, um, 23, 24 now. And like, I just don't think you can plan this. I think, you know, you, if you do like yeah. invest in pitches, you have to give them a five to 10 year plan. And a lot of it's bullshit a lot of the time that you're just having to make up. <laughs> it really like, is. I mean, I didn't even, I never ever planned on having a game studio. So like if you'd spoke to me even, I mean, it was eight years in June. If you'd spoke to me less than nine years ago, I still wouldn't have had a plan to make my own studio. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's just like, it's trying to find a way to sustain and revolve with momentum. The hardest thing is not growing too quickly. Um, you know, for us, yes. we're double the size we were before we started Battletoads, but the studio costs nearly four times the amount of money it used to. Um, mm -hmm. And I think this is why we kind of see, you see studios, right, where, you know, my biggest fear was we don't want to be a studio where we release the biggest game of our career in Battletoads, and then we go under three months mm -hmm. later. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because you see it, right? You, yep. sit, you, and yeah. you sit there and you go, oh my God, how's that happened? Like, they've just released this awesome game. And like, it, I think that's the reality, right? Like, I think sometimes it's kind of you get to a point where it's about survival and mm -hmm. then, you know, you find a way to survive and maybe you get acquired by an EA or a Microsoft. I was going to say, that's what happens. You look up and you oh, see studio don't. acquisitions <laughs> and because, you know, you're going from project to project to figure out how I'm going to pay, how we're going to eat. And so when you get mm -hmm. acquired, all of that sort of goes away. You got the, bun the money, the backing, you kind of just... But then you also lose that, um, that feeling of this is mine. This is way. mine. This yeah. is mine. You know, and I, we always hear great, th we've heard great things recently about, you know, Microsoft giving creators the creative freedom. And I guess the one thing I want to ask yeah. you too was how was that working with Microsoft and Red? Like, do you guys get that creative freedom that we hear so much about? Like when they, uh, I know you guys went to choir, but you guys worked with them hand in hand as far as making the game. Like, how was that creative freedom? Did you guys really have well, that? Fame, you know, they're, Microsoft comparatively is very open like they'll be like, "Hey, we bought you, but hey, do what you want." Compared to like, which is uh, awesome, yeah. <clears throat> Mass Effect Andromeda. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Compare, you know what? I rip on EA, but like, they got the track record. But, but like, yeah, what is what is it? Do you guys did you get the freedom, or did you be like, "Hey, it's pigeonholed. Do what do what we want you to do." No, I mean, look, you're you're seeing Delala's battle tones. Like, mm -hmm. I can't remember. I can't remember a single creative pushback we had. Like the only things that we would back and forth on is that naughty jokes. So <laughs> you you can tell from speaking to me, I'm not exactly the most poshest, eloquent man. And you partner me with one of the lead writers of a Rick and Morty. <laughs> Battle you get along well. Very yeah. different way, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. And so there was, you know, that, and it was never like you guys can't do this. It was just like, you know. We'd slip something in there, and then somebody would be like, um, "This sounds like you're making a certain type of joke." Here. <laughs> and I'd try to call it dumb at first, and then they'd be like, "What does it mean then?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, it means exactly what." We're doing. <laughs> um, but look, you know, they, they were—they were amazing, right? Like they could have, even if they turned around at the start and been like, "Look, you know, we we know what we want. You need to make what we want. We'll pay you to do it." Like we still probably would have done it, mm -hmm. but that wasn't what it was. They. You know, I never expected in 2018 when I signed this that when the game came out, it would say a Delala Studios game. Like, you know, yeah. Delala, like when they turned around to me, and I only found out they were doing that like the week before the, the announced trailer went out this year. Um, oh, wow. Like, Jesus. So we thought it was just going to be like, you know, Rare and Delala partnership. But like the fact they turned around and they said, you know, we're going to put Rare Presents, the Delala Studios game, was amazing. Um, and yeah, like I, I, I got to make the exact game I wanted to make. Like, I never thought I'd get away with being like, you know the genre mashup? I want to do like 11 game modes. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to have a weird game where they've got <laughs> normal jobs and pimples and masseuse. Oh, something yes. Tag and, you know, and so, yeah, I mean, we work closely with, um, there was two Pauls. So Paul Collins, who was kind of like our creative liaison at Rare, um, who's an incredible person for being like, 
he loves Rare IP. Like he's he's actually younger than me, but he just got this amazing knowledge of their legacy. Um, mm -hmm. Was a good creative liaison, and then Paul Cunningham, who was kind of like his official role is like external partnerships manager, but really he was kind of like our produ like our external producer. Um, and I just felt that they wanted they just wanted us to execute our vision and help us navigate the landscape of communicating that out to Microsoft and Rare. Um, so yeah, I mean. There was a couple of jokes that got cut. The, grunt, <laughs> the grunts that the alien made when you massaged him were a little bit too grunty at one point. Um, I was I'm like, I'm sitting here playing and I'm like, <gasps> there were some jokes. <gasps> oh, that's dirty. Okay, let me keep playing. <laughs> like, there's yeah. some jokes in there. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I no, guess. When we got the Peggy rating back, we were like, how the hell? Is <laughs> right? We were like, Even... okay. Like we I think we reacted to that too on level <laughs> one game. It's like, how did they get the Peggy rating? Because I know there's going to be dirty jokes all up in there. <laughs> uh, you know, we honestly, like, I think, you know, and, and and this isn't a slight on anyone because not everyone knows how this works. But I think people mm -hmm. think like you get a rating and you have to stay in that rating. When really, like, no. we the game, we send it off and we get told like, mm -hmm. and if we're not happy with that rating, we can make changes. But literally, it came back and it was. What was it Peggy Seven or mm -hmm. was it? Yeah, Peggy Seven ESR. It's like oh, ten plus, wasn't it? And we were like, are, are they are they sure? I like, guess. Do we want to check <laughs> made everything? Like, but yeah, well, I think people um, forget that like the things we love. Like, here's my biggest example: Romeo and Juliet would be a mature rating nowadays oh, yeah. because talking about the maidenhead and all that stuff. It's like, yeah, that's 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 a mature rating. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, we have games like GTA that are definitely mature, but then we have games like yours that, I mean, the jokes, if you get them, they're adult, some of them, but, like, most of them are like, okay, whatever. And I, I was, uh, you can ask Fame, I reacted. I was still surprised at the uh, Peggy 7, and I was like, yeah, Peggy I'm... 7? Are you sure about that? <laughs> we were. And obviously, like, you know... We had a lot more younger audience playing than I expected. Like, mm -hmm. I've loved seeing all the families playing. That's been awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And seeing families playing, I'm not going to lie, it made me believe that we removed a couple of the jokes that were in there because <laughs> I think otherwise, like, playing, you would have probably been playing with your 10 year old and you would have been like, yeah, this is going off. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, Microsoft and Rare were awesome, man. Like this, like when, when what you're playing is the game we wanted to make. Like you're not playing it through a, a Rare lens or a Microsoft filter, you know. And they really just wanted to help us make what we wanted to make. Like you know, there was no, this is our design, our characters, our worlds, our our execution. Um, yeah. And you know, everyone's nervous when a big studio is involved with stuff they love. Like, of course. Like when Double Fine got acquired, like instantly I was like, "Oh my god!" Okay. Ooh, anxious, like, like fingernails. Like, you know that Double Fine documentary, the you know when they made uh, Broken Age. Mm -hmm. I watched yes. that. I probably watched that seven times on when we were making Battletoads all the way through. Um, cause yeah. it, I always find it very. It makes me happy to see Tim Schafer freaking out because it makes me feel better about the fact I'm freaking out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm not I, alone. <laughs> It is that. It's completely that, right? Like, you know, because I loved Indie Game, the movie, but I do think it it makes things look a little bit too positive at the end. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's Indie Game, the movie, is a bit of a fairy tale in a lot of ways. You see the struggle and it comes out in success. Um, yeah. Whereas Broken Age, you know, in that Double Fine documentary, I loved how you saw the real, real bad. Um, yeah. And so when they got acquired, initially I was a bit like, oh my God. And then I was like, Paul, you know, the, the big thing that Tim Schafer has always said is his biggest worry is having money. And suddenly, my favorite game studio don't have to worry about money anymore. So, yeah. you know, and hopefully, you know, Microsoft will be like they was with us and like they've shown they have been with other studios and they let Double Fine be Double Fine, but just mm -hmm. have the security of, you know, their bank account getting filled every year. Yeah. I think uh, Fame can sit with me on this is we've we've developed uh interviewed a few developers we interviewed winterborne studios who um the head was a former uh what did he work on in infinity, infinity war, war. Uh, call of duty infinity treyarch war, yeah. he was with there we just interviewed greek their indie studio Nap and Napagante now studios. 
Navagante, yes. yes. Uh, now you're most of your people come from all kinds of things. It's to to hear that Microsoft isn't because I mean we get the experience. Oh, Microsoft buying them. We we know that they're not buy, like interfering, but to hear that they're not interfering is I don't I can't speak for fame is is nice to hear on the creative sense because you I mean I just rewatched God of War uh, God of Egypt which is a movie yes but we know there's studio influence in there so it's like it's nice to hear that there's not studio influence just button in and cutting you guys off and take I mean you guys did way too many art designs on the toads yes which is why I want the art book hey Microsoft if you're listening give me that art book <laughs> But I, it's it's nice to hear that they aren't cutting in and butting in and just you guys can be Delilah Studios because you don't get to be Delilah Studios outside of if you were to sign with the EA. <clears throat> this EA slander is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I, mean... I have a long issue with EA. <laughs> EA he has heard from me. EA knows me, so <laughs> like, whatever. Yeah, it's nice I... to hear you guys are getting to be Delilah yeah and we you know and then will it always be like that who knows and yeah. we'll you know we may have been really lucky we may have been one of many examples um you know we worked with we were actually back in 2013 we were the first ever internally incubated studio by Microsoft so like when there were five of us um yeah. you know two of, two of us went from the garages we moved into offices with Microsoft for a year um and working with Microsoft in 2013 compared to working with Rare and Microsoft in 2018 felt like two completely different companies. Um, so, you know, I, I think, I hope that what we've seen is what they're looking to do, and that is work with people they trust so that they don't have to get too hands on. Um, yeah. And, you know, they've made some amazing acquisitions. Like, their their studios are, are looking awesome, right? Yeah. Like, they're, they're getting really good people. Um, the same way yeah. so. Sony has made some amazing acquisitions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. I think that this next, you know, moving forward, the first party products coming from, you know, Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, like, I don't care about the console war. All I care about is there are awesome studios that are going to have buckets of money to make awesome games. Like, <laughs> yep. You know who wins the war? We win the war. Like, there we win. Go. Because, you know, we're going to get... God of War 2, we're going to get a new Insomniac game, we're going to get a new Halo, we're going to get new Double Fine. Yes. You know, like, Ooh, we... Man after we, me heart. We win, <laughs> right? Um, and yeah, we, we we got to make our game, and I hope there's other people that like us, smaller studios, that kind of get a couple of years of financial security to work on wicked IP with big companies like Rare and Microsoft, and that they get to make their vision for what they want to do with those properties. I will say two things. Have you guys ever seen the Family Guy episode where Peter grew out his beard and he had like a nest? Oh, God, yeah. I've been waiting for a bird to come out of his beard this entire <laughs> time. <laughs> I mean, AJ's beard is like luscious. It was like, oh, I almost wish I could grow out a beard. And secondly, like, I am... He's he about to grow out that Chi Man food, like, whew, throw it over yeah. the shoulder, whew. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm going to, over the next couple of months, continue to bug Craig Duncan on Twitter. I'm like, who is this random person keep tweeting me telling him that I want Delilah to do um, Battletoads and Double Dragon? I'm just going to bug him <laughs> mm -hmm. at least once a month. I want it. And he's going to say, who, who is this guy? I'm like, oh, the guy that wants Double Dragon and, 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 and Battletoads <laughs> made by Delilah you know and only Delilah. You know what IP Delilah could do? Golden Axe. That'd be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun. Oh, God, yes. That... I mean, oh. they, they grow another studio with some real hidden gems, right? Some real, you know, one of the ones they know I loved and I've spoken to them about years ago was Rent a Hero, which was this really obscure Japanese game where... That was, like, hella obscure. <laughs> he tried to get a pizza delivered and he ends up getting a super suit delivered instead and he accidentally <laughs> beats up his dad who's dressed as a dinosaur. Like, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. That's the type of shit I like. That shit makes no sense. That makes no. We need sense. more of that shit. <laughs> well, AJ, this no. this was. Oh, sorry. We do that a lot. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, we we talk over each other. We I know do. fame is gonna transition to the, the final shit, but like, I gotta ask. Um, any job opportunities available for anybody out there? <laughs> Watch the website is the best thing to say. Oh, and also like anyone who's awesome, just. Go on the website, even if there's no job offers, like no job opportunities there, and just 
use the contact form, send us your folios. Um, you know, all I can tell you is, you know, my policy for hiring, which I think rolls out to all my leads, is that if you can show us you can do the job, that's much more important than any qualification. So if you're an artist, show us your art. Thank you. like, I don't care if you went to art school or not. All I care about is can you draw some art? Um, Thank so, you. So yeah, so please, like, if you're talented, please feel free to reach out. Um, and if there's no opportunities now, we'll definitely try to keep you in mind for stuff that comes up in the future. See, I'm not talented, yes. but if you just need another fat guy to kind of come around and hang out, you know, <laughs> watch cartoons. I, I, I've got the quota right now. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think. I'm a fat guy who watches cartoons at the moment. Um, Although, when he shaves that beard off, he's going to be slim, and you're like, who is that boy? <laughs> AJ, Ugh. it was a pleasure to speak with you. I I am beyond grateful and for you to come out mm -hmm. and, and, and just take time out of your, which is now nighttime over there, take your time out of your <laughs> night to come out and kind of talk with us. It, it's, it's been a pleasure, and I cannot wait to hear about what you guys are working. I can't wait to see that beard being shaved <laughs> because I know something big is coming. Too. Nothing, something big is coming, and I just, I, I'm super excited um, for what the future holds. Thank you for, you know, continue to pitch and, and bug Microsoft or whatever you did to get them to make, let you guys make Battle Toads. I appreciated it because it, it was near and dear to my heart to be able to play that game and to play with my son, another generation who didn't get to play the original games to get to play it. Um, I want, I want to thank you guys just for being an awesome studio, making the game, and for you taking time out to talk with us today. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you very much for having me on here. Like I said, it's it's no. Don't worry about the time difference. It's no bother. It's been really nice to talk to you both. Like and you know, I've loved all the questions and the honesty. Like I've had a great time. Um, so you've you've made my week. So don't you worry about bothering me at all because it's not been a bother. Oh, my heart. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> like yes. Yeah. Oh god. He's got me. <laughs> so for YouTube and sound purposes, uh, thank you guys for rocking with us. This has been a very, very, very special episode at LevelOnGaming.com. Don't forget to get out your gaming news from LevelOnGaming.com. Be sure to follow AJ and follow the Lala Studios on Twitter. The link will be in the description. If you're listening on uh, iTunes or Spotify, go over to our website, go to YouTube, follow the link, but make sure you guys follow AJ and the Lala Studios. Thank you guys once again for rocking with us. And we're out. Awesome. Annyeong.